Because as you look at any of those movements that have changed culture, it's never just one person. And yeah, there's one person that perhaps is a figurehead, but they never do things in an isolated manner. There's interconnectedness of a, a multitude of individuals who cooperate together and form institutions together. So for example, if you look at the Protestant Reformation, now Martin Luther certainly stands up as this very significant figure. Uh, and there are there, there's plenty of hagiographic material on Luther praising him as this kind of singular figure that changed the world by himself. And even in Luther's lifetime, people speak that way. He's this very celebrity kind of figure. In a way, he's the first celebrity in the Western world. And, and so you have people kind of with these wild stories about Luther and Luther's prophesied in the Bible and all this other stuff. Um, but and, and not to diminish Luther's significance as an individual, because I think there is a, a singular significance to, to him as a figure. There's a uniqueness to him there. But the Reformation that you know he spawned was not just him. There is a network of people that were key for the Reformation actually being something that is successful. There is a reason why Luther was successful in someone like John Huss or John Wycliffe, they were not successful because Luther was connected and he was connected in a number of ways. He was connected to princes and he had a prince that protected him and supported his reformation, which is really key. Uh, but not only that, you had his connection with pastors, you know, someone like a, a Bugenhagen or you had a Justice Jonas or you had a, a Philip Melanchthon, of course, being the scholarly figure that really stands behind a lot of the ideas of the Reformation. You also have Luther's connection with Johann von Staupitz. Now Staupitz doesn't really fully support the Reformation, but in some ways the Reformation wouldn't have happened without that figure either. So you have the school at Wittenberg, you have people like Andreas Karlstadt, even though there's that falling out later between, between them, but you have an Amstorf would be another one. You have a number of figures that are uh, academic figures who are elites. Luther's an elite. He's a, he's a professor of theology in Wittenberg who has regular correspondence with princes. He's not just your average guy. If you want to look at, you know, the movement that had peasant leaders, look at the Anabaptists. Um, but you, the Reformation is successful largely because you have someone who is elite and has elite connections. He's educated first, starts being educated as a lawyer, uh, you know, and then he's he's from a, a middle class family with the rising middle class uh, at the time, but he has a lot of connections, and and so Luther was an elite, and you could say that without Luther as this elite figure, the Reformation probably wouldn't have been successful. Without the support of the princes following the Reformation, the Reformation probably wouldn't have been successful, and and you know we know that because we can even look at historically other people who were reformers but didn't have those same kind of connections, and it wasn't. It didn't work out. And there are a number of other factors involved as well. The printing press certainly is a huge part of this. And yes, the education of the laity and the spreading of his ideas among people who are not part of that elite class was, was huge. In the support of the average person or the peasants, that, that was hugely influential and important for the Reformation as well. But there had to be all of these other factors in place as well.